Hey, what's up, guys? It's Serge here. I do a lot of discussions on using multi time frame analysis for active investing and trading. I wanted to go through uh, an actual example, a current example uh, of uh, using multi time frame analysis on the S&P 500 right now um, and would encourage active investors that are not stuck in front of their screens all day, so, so, so people that are not day traders, which is the mo most, most of us, uh, use this approach um, and to to really increase the probability and gain more perspective on uh, on on the trades that you put on, so you can kind of feel more at ease with the positions you are on, uh, and then also you have those pictures in your head as you get on the go, and you and you and you maybe update a trade on your iPad or on your iPhone or wherever uh, you might be. So let's start with the S and P 500, and you can see what we had here in the month of June 2015. We had a a bearish outside reversal month, which is the first one in a long time. We haven't seen one in a long time. So, um, you know, when you see one of these things on a monthly chart, you definitely want to sit up and take notice. It's, it's a bearish sign, right? Hence the word bearish engulfing. So that's our big picture point. We see the S&P bearish outside reversal month. Okay, you know, respect. So let's move. Let's let's move in a little bit closer and. And use the weekly chart of the S&P and see what we can see. Okay, so we use the monthly bars and now we use the weekly bars. And um, what we're seeing here, this is a, a longer term view. So this goes back all the way to 2011. You can see that uh, the S&P has been rising on a on lower uh, momentum ever since basically last summer almost, so 2014, summer 2014. Um, but so far, we're still holding the 2011 support line so far, right? Um, at the same time, you know, it's increasingly looks possible that we're going to start breaking below there. So that's important. We're at the support. Keep that in mind a month, on a monthly time frame, on, on a multi-year weekly time frame. And finally, we zoom in to the daily chart in the S&P. So this is sort of like the, the, the much closer up look, right? And you'll see that where we are is we're right at the 200-day moving average, which is this red line here. So the 200-day moving average at the moment, hence coincides with the 2011 support line, right? The one I just showed you here. So that's really important. So that's what I call a confluence support area. If that thing snaps, you probably see downside follow through with increased momentum, okay? So I hope this makes sense. This is really, really uh, important stuff. Uh, from a downside target perspective, and you wanna use your downside target, uh, you wanna start sort of the, the opposite. So I start with downside target measurements first in the daily charts and then the weekly and monthly charts. I go reverse, which basically just, you know, sh is a more risk averse thing to do. Um, so a more conservative target is going to come from a near term time frame, whereas opposed to the bigger picture, I usually st like to start um, on the monthly charts than weekly charts and daily charts. So again, um, just something I like to do uh, in terms of uh, what helps me to gain more perspective and stay more committed uh, and, and, and to my, to my, uh, to my trading and active investing plan. So guys, hope this uh, makes sense. Please subscribe to my video and, uh, like this, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.